the endurance, drive, stimulate, and spirit, encourage, envision, growth, activate, motivate. The summer of 2019, the summer before COVID-19, the summer before the infamous social distancing. That summer, I traveled to Calcutta, India to understand the growing impact of the slums to the women and girls in the area. While I was there, I spent majority of my time visiting nearby NGOs and charities. The first-hand experience of seeing the perils of the poor was truly humbling. It got me thinking to the number of privileges we take for granted, our education being the greatest of them all. Never have any of us sitting here today have had to make the choice between essential items we survive on to our education. This very choice is one they're sitting in the slums making every single day. Every choice is between the short-term necessity to the long-term benefits. All of this that I've shared with you is probably not the first time you've heard of it. Poverty is a wide spoken problem with considerable action being taken. However, I would like to share a different kind of poverty through one of the most eye-opening experiences to my visit of the, of the house of Mother Teresa. I was there, sat with the compassionate nuns that ran the haven, spoke with the diverse volunteers from around the world that devoted their time and effort to cater to these kids and above all, had the extraordinary opportunity to meet the lovely kids they cared for. I sat with the older children. I heard their stories and their struggle. However, one of the girls' problems brought my attention to an issue I didn't realize existed, period poverty. The irony is, period, the end of a sentence, the end of a discussion, the end of a thought, silence. Why? This silence is one that has been following us for so long. The girl I talked about, her name was Dia, and she shared a story I'd never heard of. She, told, she was born into a low socioeconomic background, and school was her chance to escape the ruthless poverty cycle her family was enveloped into. Books, grades, and school meant the world to her. However, she was a girl, and so naturally, fate was pitted against her. She told me that they were going through financial struggles and every purchase was to be thought thoroughly. There was no room for indulgent buying. Indulgent buying here didn't mean buying luxury products, going out for expensive dinners, or buying nice clothes. For her, it meant no access to menstruational products. So she had to get resourceful by using old cloth, plastic, and rags to make do. And you don't need to be a doctor to know that this was extremely unsanitary and left her susceptible to numerous diseases. Her struggle didn't end there. She missed a week's worth of school every single month, simply because she lacked access to these products, products that she was entitled to under a human right. When I miss a day's worth of school, I feel as though I have an ocean's worth of work to catch up on. I can only imagine how missing a week's worth of school hinders in learning. The story I've shared today belongs to Dia, but resonates with more, more than 500 million women, yet speaking about it is considered a taboo. Why? Period poverty is a problem that has existed through the ages and affects poor women and girls who cannot, who cannot afford basic amenities. And now, because of the coronavirus pandemic, affects frontline workers, doctors, nurses, as, and above all, women and girls in any social hierarchy due to no knowledge of this issue. Providing a sanitary pad to one girl enables her to continue going to school. The time to speak is now. The more we speak, the more we destigmatize, and the more progress we can make. We need to take action, and there has been considerable. 
Progressive nations like Scotland have taken strides in providing these essential period products free in the country and now the nation. This results in girls and women being empowered to work. We've all seen the power when nations, communities, and individuals rally together to provide food and basic amenities to the most vulnerable. Yet here we are having to deprive young girls of their education. I feel now, more than ever, discussing this topic will result in positive changes and see the change that we need right now. Giving a sanitary pad to one girl enables her to continue going to school. In addition, educating women results in an educated family. Imagine the world of opportunities that open when everybody's educated and nothing is holding them back, especially nothing as simple as sanitary products. The time to speak is now. The more we speak, the more we destigmatize. We need to end this ruthless poverty cycle and break free. Thank you.